All right, so it's Tuesday evening. It's December 17th. And it uh, looks like we got some new Google Stadia games. Now we have uh, Borderlands 3. And tomorrow, December 18th, we're going to have Ghost Recon Breakpoint. And Borderlands 3 right now, it's only $38. So you're not paying a full $60. There's also another game that's out. But I don't care much about that game. Uh, and it's like a, some Japanese anime fighting game. Uh, I really, you know, yeah, don't care much about it. It's uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Uh, all right so ghost recon breakpoint i want to see how much the ghost recon breakpoint is going to be tomorrow uh you can also get just dance uh 2020 for like uh 29 dollars but nobody cares about that now this is the one i i'm kind of like disappointed i should have waited i should have waited for this you know for the grid ultimate edition i already have grid uh this is a good deal, $34 right here. I should have waited, but I had no idea that it was going to be on sale. But that's okay. I can always get the additional upgrades, you know, uh, for like 30 bucks. It's all right. So Borderlands 3 right now, they're available. I uh, already got it. And um, tomorrow's the Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Not sure how much they're going to sell the Ghost Recon Breakpoint what the pricing is going to be but uh, we'll, we'll see we'll find out uh, the thing is um, it's like uh, Google Stadia they never tell you in advance like what they're gonna do and this is the kind of thing that that sucks that that uh, I was talking about yesterday where you don't know when these deals are gonna happen like you know they don't tell you in advance when it's going to happen they don't tell you in advance when they're going to release something and uh, I just wish that they would be more communicative uh, you know what I mean you know like a PlayStation blog you go to PlayStation uh, blog and on a PlayStation blog you know exactly uh, what's coming when what day what date so you have all the information you need uh, but here you don't know. It, it's uh, it's one of those things where you just kind of have to wait and see. But hey, it is what it is. They have some deals. Uh, so it's only on the Borderlands 3. And uh, I believe that's it. Just the Borderlands 3. Ghost Recon Breakpoint. I don't know if the Ghost Recon Breakpoint is going to be a full price. Or if they're going to sell it for maybe $38 or $29. I don't know. I have no idea, but uh, we'll find out tomorrow. I'm going to fire up a Borderlands 3 just to see how well it runs. So uh, let's go check it out. Hopefully my internet is working. I hope. Breakpoint is 30. Okay, so tomorrow. So tomorrow it's going to be $30. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. So what's going on here? Looks like um, uh, something's wrong with my internet, I guess. I don't know. We'll find out. I'm, I'm pretty sure... Everything's hunky dory. Hey, typical. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Uh, it's been a long day. I had some stuff I had to take care of, but uh, I'm doing good, man. I'm hanging in there. I'm grinding it, dude. I'm grinding it just like everybody else. Uh, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. I thought it was my internet for a minute, but it's not. It was just. Uh, I forgot to click the uh, the button 
to, to play. <laughs> I actually like the controller, you know, Pika. It's not that bad. It feels like it's slightly bigger than PlayStation 4 controller, PlayStation 4 Pro controller. And uh, it's a bit heavier because there's more technology built inside of it. It's a Wi-Fi controller. And uh, it feels like a little bit bigger version of Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Like a slightly bigger version of Nintendo Pro Controller. I would join the party, but the thing is, um, I won't be, you know, you won't be able to hear me, but I'll be able to hear you. Uh, I would join the party, but the thing is, uh, right now I would need a separate microphone to go to my computer. It would just be too much. There would be too much stuff going on in order for me to join a party right now. Alright, so we got the brightness. Everything's good. Okay, except let's see. Oh, this is this is pretty good actually. Holy shit. Let's see. Hold on. Let me bring it a little bit closer here. Can you guys see it? Hold on. Can you see it? Hold on. No late. I mean, man, there's no latency here. Holy shit! I'll go. Uh, I'll go easier, dude. You know what? I'm gonna go easy. People can call me chicken shit. I don't care at this point. I'm gonna go easy. Competition, comp competition, cooperation. Let's go with the cooperation. So, you want to hear a story, huh? A hey, how you doing, Chris? How are you? Uh, it's going. It's not bad. It was a, it was a bit of a long day. Um, I'm, I'm doing good, man. You know, just out there grinding in, just like everybody else. Thank you. I hope you're having a good day, too, bro. Typical. Uh, so, with Stadia, no PC, no console. Need but only TV monitor and a good stable Uh Yeah, you just <laughs> need a device that can support uh, Chrome browser, and you need to uh, activate your account through your Google email, Gmail, and use that account on your Chrome browser. Type in Stadia.com, and automatically will be synced in, and you're good to go. You know. Well, you can use pretty much any device you want to use. Or PC, laptop, uh, use tablet. Whatever In the future, there will be more devices, you know, like phones, Android phones, and stuff like that. But uh, if you want to take the, the 4K now, HDR, the best possible way to play, then you got to go with the uh, premiere edition of uh, Stadia. And you gotta get the Maybe controller with the uh, Chromecast Ultra. They remind me of you. Just a little. Don't let it go no, away. I mean here I am. This is my Xbox uh, Xbox One X controller. Control. I used both the Xbox Her One X and the PlayStation and 4 Pro controller. Save no issues, no problems. Aura Everything ran. Um. My settings, you mean like, uh, I'm not sure, like, what do you mean by that, like, on auto? You mean my, uh, Stadia thing? Oh, you talk about PlayStation 4. Not sure what that could be. The flickering could be 
so many things. You know, it could be your um, controller. It could be your cable on the television. It could be so many things. Uh, so it's really kind of hard to tell what the issue might be. Uh, it's one of those things you just have to... Uh, I would, what I would do if I was you, I would just uh, disconnect your PlayStation 4 Pro, select everything on automatic, and uh, see what happens. Because it could be so many problems. If it's flickering, man, it, here's the thing, it is difficult for me, it is difficult for me to help people when I... When I can't see exactly, when I'm not there, you know, when I'm not there, it's difficult for me to see what's going on. Like, I have to be there in person to see exactly what the issue might be, what the problem might be. Yeah. You know. Hold on a second, guys. I gotta, I gotta, I turn this volume down because uh, I don't want to get flagged. So I had to move the volume down. Uh, it's just if they hear just a little bit of music uh, they can automatically uh, flag the video did I get the link of the shadow no uh, I can't because uh, shadow PC it's uh, the data center it's not it's not available in Florida so I have to wait for for them to to build a data center in Florida, you know. But I would love to try it out. I would love to try out the Shadow PC. Um, I know there's a different ways you can try it. You know, use someone else's address or use different address somewhere else in a different state that's available. But some people are saying that it, that it doesn't work that well because the cloud data center is so far and it's just not gonna work that well. It doesn't work that well when the data center is so far away. Uh, you know what I mean? You you have to be uh, close to the data center or you have to have a data center in your, in your state to truly appreciate, you know, what the shadow uh, PC can do, you know. I'll just have to wait till they built it, you know, whenever, whenever they build it, you know, they're gonna let me know I already signed up. They're going to send me an email as soon as it becomes available. You know, I'm going to go ahead and check it out for sure. Uh, South Florida, Miami. All right, so let me turn the music up. It's powerful. Could come in handy. <laughs> there we go. So who I'm gonna be? I'll be this dude, this guy, this big guy, FL4, uh, FL4K, dude, this is me. This guy was designed to be me. FL4K, Florida 4K, that's me. That has to be me, bro, that's it. That has to be me, 100%. Thanks, Jack. Are you in Florida too? No vault hunter, huh? Name's Marcus. You picked a hell of a time to join Look at the quality. Quality's break. pretty good, man. <laughs> See someone survive the attack? I'm Lilith, commander of the Crimson Raiders. Those bandits you fought are part of No, I have not um I have not checked it out. I have not seen it yet. Uh, no. We spoke inside my mind. This is your stuff, Volkan. Cool, I'll, I'll check it late, uh, later. Stadia, thanks, man. I'll check it tonight. Oh, Cape Canaveral. You're not that far from... Well, yeah, I mean, about three hours. Three and a half hours, I guess. You're not far from Disney, man. You're, like, right around at Disney. Next to Kennedy Space Center. I get. I guess you, you get to see uh, the SpaceX launch. You saw all the SpaceX launches. You saw all the uh, space shuttle previous launches. So you next to NASA. Nice man. You're you're in a good spot, bro. 
You're next to NASA. You're next to Daytona. You are next to uh, Disney. You're on a good spot, man. You're on a really good spot. I'm doing good, man. How you doing? Hold on. Cool. It looks great, man. Uh, look at this straight from the browser, and uh, it look how good it looks, man. It's it's crazy, you know. No latency. Like people have been asking me, why am I showing the controller? Because I want you guys to see that there is no latency, man. It's just smooth. Look at this. This is super smooth, man. Uh, You know, listen, man. There's there is no doubt in my mind. This is where uh, the future of gaming is going, guys. Uh, the more I look into it, the more I research, everything points out that you know the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation Five. Honestly, honest to God, those are the last hardware consoles. That's it. I swear to God. Uh, mark my words. You will not see any more consoles after that. Mark my words. It's not going to happen, guys, because these companies are not going to invest into building all this expensive hardware. Why would they do that when they can do it this way, cheaper way? And they can control the games. They can control the, you know, piracy and all that crap. Uh, it, it, it's going to happen, you know. It doesn't matter how you like it and don't like it. You accept it, doesn't accept it. Uh, that will be the last of the consoles. There will be some upgrades, you know, PlayStation 5, whatever. Uh, some upgrades to the X series as well. But after that, 2030, 2031, mark my words, 2031 summer, you will not see any consoles. On, on whatever you have, you have, but they will not sell them anymore. You, you know, they will they'll stop. they will stop producing them. Uh, it is 4K in HDR, but not on a browser. Uh, I s don't have a splitter, HDMI splitter adapter to hook up my Chromecast Ultra. I can still connect my Chromecast Ultra uh, in 4K, but the problem is I need a uh, splitter. I need HDMI splitter because of HDCP uh, protection thing that's in there, that's encoded. You gotta bypass the HDCP, which is the highest de definition, high definition copyright protection act that they established. So, same thing with the PlayStation 3. You know, with the PlayStation 3, you gotta. Let me. Oh, that's good. With PlayStation 3, you have to bypass that HDCP. So it's the same thing. Secondary color. Hold on. I need something better like this. There we go. red and blue or I'll just put it white there we go yeah it feels 60 FPS this is 60 FPS you know uh, what you see it's 60 FPS and uh, it feels good What's up, Eddie Ramirez? How you doing? What's up, even? How are you, man? What's going on? How are you guys doing? Do I think Stadia Next Step will be VR capable? Well, this French company, uh, Shadow PC, has already proven 
that they can do VR uh, through a stream. So the VR is already possible. Like uh, with with Shadow PC gaming, you can use your Oculus Rift through a computer that's being streamed from a server somewhere out there in your state. So streaming VR is already available. It's already possible. So I don't. I, yeah, sure. I mean, technically, you can do anything now with a with a good internet connection and technology of the servers. I mean, there's no limits. You can do whatever. Uh, seriously, there's no limits now. This is the new technology. This is how it's going to be, and uh, it's the way it is. And you never have to worry about building building a, a giant PC, an expensive PC. Uh, you'll have a choice. You'll have a choice to say, "Hey, man, I don't want to build the ridiculous. Um, I don't want to spend thousands of dollars. I don't have thousands of dollars laying around to build a damn PC." Uh, let me just lease it. And if I don't want to lease it anymore, I just uh, stop the uh, the subscription and boom. There you go. It's good that we have that choice. I think it's pretty awesome that we have that choice. Because uh, building a PC, I can tell you, uh, it ain't it ain't cheap. <laughs> Believe me. Uh, just ask my wallet. It was screaming. It ain't cheap. All right. So uh, whoever tells me building a PC is cheap, well, what are you building? What kind of PC are you building? A browser? You don't need a PC for a browser. You just buy a laptop or, or uh, buy a, like a tablet or something. I'm talking about a really good rig, uh, a good PC gaming rig. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna cash out some some mad money, for sure. Trust me. I know it. Do you don't know how I know it? Because I have it. It's right here, right next to me. I know it. Hey, what's up, Mike? How you doing? Oh, there's no question about it. They, they, they have a long way to go. But I think they're slowly, they're like learning. You know, they're starting to learn. I think with with Stadia, it's gonna be one of those things. People are gonna need a patient, uh, patience with with Google. It's gonna take a while. You know, and, and um, that's why it's so difficult to review Stadia at the moment because uh, it's one of those things where I think they're serious. Uh, I don't think they want to go down the road of on live. I think really the Google is serious about this. They they seriously want to invest. Uh, the on live was the one guy, Steve Perlman, and you know I think he was just after the money. Uh, it was his own company, his own servers. Uh, this is different. This is a big, giant juggernaut of a company. We're not talking some small-time guy like Steve Perlman. Uh, this is a Google, the, the big company, a juggernaut, man. All right. So I think they're they're serious about investing money and, and moving forward. I know, I know, not many are on board, but it's gonna take time. It's gonna take time. Um, it's one of those things that's gonna take time, but eventually, uh, it's it's you know, it's gonna happen. Hey, what's up, Jed? How you doing, man? Hey, did you uh, did you subscribe to me on uh, Google Stadia? Was that you? I think that might have been you. What do we got here? But man, this looks as good as the PC. Well, this is a PC. Here's the thing. Uh, this is old PC. These are PC games, man. Um, everything's running from a PC. 10 teraflops AMD PC. Uh, 60 FPS. Where's my map? Oh, I see the map. I got it. Oh, I'm definitely going to try Shadow. Uh, but the problem with the Shadow is uh, they need to hurry up, man. They, they need to start building these servers. Uh, they're having a difficult time moving throughout the states. They're not advertising as much. Their websites are like in, in French. Uh, 
I don't know about the shadow, uh, to be honest with you. This guy, it's a one guy. And this guy sure has money, this French guy. But I don't like it when it's uh, no, with somebody you don't know. I don't like these independent guys when you don't know them. Because I don't know if they're going to jump the ship and then make the money, jump the ship, and shut down the service. You know what I mean? That worries me sometimes. But I will try it. You know, I think with Google, it's a, it's a juggernaut of a company. I mean, they cannot fail because they're a big company. They're, they're wealthy. They're, they're trillionaires. Okay? Uh, so they have the resources. This other guy in France, I don't know how much of a resources he's got. Uh, if, he's, if his investors pull out, they're going to shut down the service. You know, I worry about uh, individuals, small-time individuals who are trying to make it big, like Steve Perlman, those types of guys. I worry about that because I, they're only there to make money. Okay, let's just be honest. They're there to make money. Uh, and if they're not making enough money, they're going to shut down the service, and they're going to collect the money and run off to the sunset. A big, giant companies like Microsoft... Google, Sony, those are juggernauts. They, they ain't going nowhere. They're not going anywhere. So if I'm going to bet my money, I'll bet my money on a Google because, Jesus Christ, NSA, CIA, they're all working with Google for crying out loud. This is a big, giant, goddamn company. Okay? They have resources. They have resources, man. They rule the world. Okay? You can't go to it. You can't find a computer that doesn't use a Google search. Uh, so they're juggernauts. They're huge juggernauts. If I'm going to bet my money, I'm going to bet my money on a big giant company instead of some French guy who's trying to make it and is having some difficult time even building the... Uh, like, why you have a difficult time building it uh, nationwide? Like, why only certain states? Like, what's the problem, dude? You know, if you're such a big hot shot, why don't you make it available throughout the entire Europe, uh, throughout the entire United States, Mexico? Why? Because it takes money, takes investors, and he doesn't have those investors. I did some research on this guy, on this French guy. I'm sorry, but I, I wouldn't bet my money on that guy. I'm just telling you. I know how business works. I would not bet my money on that guy. I would bet my money in a big company. Remember, Google hired... Phil Harrison, okay? Phil Harrison doesn't run the show, okay? Google hired Phil Harrison. Google can fire Phil Harrison and hire somebody else. So I believe that Google has a more potential. That's just my opinion. I'm not saying that the shadow will fail, but I'm saying if I'm going to bet my money, I'll bet my money on Google for sure. <clears throat> oh, they will even, even, uh, listen, they, they got resources, they got money, they can do it, man. Uh, they'll do it. They can do it, man. Google's big. Uh, they're going to do it. It shouldn't be a problem, you know. I don't think that the European market will say no to Google Stadia. I don't think they're going to say no. So, yeah, sure, we'll do it. All right, so let's go check it out. Let's uh, let's move. Let's see what we got. Content pass. I already played through the, uh, through this. As a matter of fact, let me fast travel. Can I fast travel? Well, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm thinking. Look, I have that on my mind too. You know, I'm thinking that there's a good potential they will fail, but at the same time, I'm also thinking that um, they have a potential. Um, I was thinking about that. Are they going to fail? Are they not going to fail? Um, I think with Google Stadia, this is going to be one of those things where people will just have to. You'll have to have a patience, uh, and if you don't have a patience. Uh, it's one of those things where you're just going to have to wait. 
you're going to have to wait. And I think by the end of next year, 2020, holidays 2020, I think people will be surprised as to how this company went from the most hated service to the most now usable service in 2020. We're talking 12 months from now. Uh, and with a company like this, with, with Stadia, I would say 12 months. Who knows if Phil Harrison's going to be on board? Maybe they're going to hire somebody new. They're going to hire somebody else. And that somebody else will be the new CEO of Stadia. And that somebody else will get other developers on board, other developers to make exclusive games for Google Stadia. Uh, maybe they're going to upgrade their machines, do some other things. A lot can happen. A lot can happen in 12 months. Why? Because Google Stadia has money. They have resources. Uh, this French guy, yes, he's got money too, but he doesn't have the resources. He doesn't have connections the way Google does. And that's a big advantage to Google because they have connections, uh, they have resources, and it, it's easier for them to approach. Uh, it's easier for them to get people to sign up and to get on board uh, because they have resources. They have means of doing it. So I think that in my opinion, I, in my opinion, I think Google Stadia 12 months from now has a great potential to be from the most hated service to the most usable service in uh, November 2020, like 12 months from now, 11 months from now, something like that. That's my, I could be wrong. Listen, maybe they're going to fail. Uh, I could be, I could be wrong. 100% I could be wrong. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. As far as the the Shadow, I'm going to try Shadow, absolutely. I'm going to try the RTX Titan uh, GPU with a 4 point uh, something gigahertz and 32 gigs of uh, RAM with one terabyte hard drive. I'm definitely going to try Shadow. Uh, I'm going to compare Shadow with uh, Stadia and how they run. Uh, obviously, the one advantage of the Shadow is the fact that you don't have to purchase any games from uh, from their service you're basically just leasing a computer and whatever games you have on your computer on your services you can go ahead and install it on the cloud based uh, computer so basically whatever games I have on my PC from Steam from Rockstar from Ubisoft from all these other uh, epic games store libraries I can go ahead and I can play all those games through their computer. So they have a potential. And I spoke to uh, Shadow North America, one of the representatives, uh, and, I, and I told them I'll be fair. I said, um, I'm going to go ahead and check it out as soon as it becomes available. I'm going to check it out, uh, let you guys know what I think. And um, so we'll see. You know, it's one of those things we just have to wait and see, man. Uh, hold on. Oh, here we go. It's right here. My bad. That could be too. Uh, Stadia Cloud Gamer. I mean, it, it's. A lo I mean, it's hard to tell at this point. Honestly, it's really difficult to say because you got to remember. You know, there's other guys out there uh, in the competition. You got uh, Amazon, you got Steam, you got Shadow, uh, you got that other company that's also uh, next to Shadow that's also leasing a computers, but they're mainly for the for the business workflow. So there's a lot of competitors out there. I mean, there's a bunch of competitors, and and we'll have to wait and see. Uh, this is one of those things where we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, 
it, it's really difficult to tell at this point which way he's going to go. But the one thing I can tell you, uh, regardless of who is, t who is who is number one, whether it's Microsoft, whether it's Amazon, Steam, uh, Google, Shadow, uh, I think the cloud technology is going to move forward. Uh, that's one thing for sure. But who's going to be holding that title of number one, cloud gaming? I don't know who's going to be that company, but I can tell you that cloud gaming is going to advance for sure. And I can see it right here that it's advancing. Uh, so that's what I think. Thank you for being here. As you guys can see, there's barely any latency here. I mean, it really, it honestly, uh, it feels as if... It feels as if uh, I'm playing from Computer Man, uh, honestly. If, if somebody walks in, if somebody clicks on this stream, and if I didn't tell them that, hey, guess what, man, I'm playing this from a, a cloud based service they would say I'm lying they, they, they would say hey dude you're lying you're not playing this you can use a mouse there's a mouse right here I got a mouse look at this it's a mouse you can use a mouse and keyboard you know look how fast that is man and then I can go and switch between this and that I hit a weapons cache nearby stay quiet and follow my every move well, Microsoft has a lot of games, you know, the one advantage that Phil Spencer has, uh, and also, I don't know if you guys know, or, uh, I'll, I'll tell you something very interesting, hold on. There was an interview that Phil Spencer did with this one guy from this magazine, Wired Magazine, or whatever, whatever it was, uh, and... Phil Spencer said that the uh, all the tech individuals who were working on Google Stadia are actually the guys who worked on the Azure servers. So the guys, the team that worked on the Azure actually got hired by Google to work on the Stadia. Can you believe that? So the guys who are, who actually are bringing a Stadia, they worked on the Azure. Think about that. <laughs> this came from Phil Spencer's mouth. It didn't come from my mouth. You guys can go ahead and watch that video. Uh, that's, what, that's, what, that's what Phil Spencer said. He said, the team that worked on the Azure, it's the same team that actually <laughs> worked on Stadia. <laughs> Think about that. Thirty dollars. Uh, that's pretty cool, man. That's tomorrow. Can't wait, Ellison. Let's look at the. Uh, hold on. Let's look at the options. Uh, the visuals. Camera calibration. Hold on. You know, the one thing I would say, it would be really cool, if Google Stadia, in the future lets you choose the graphical settings where you can choose between high resolution uh, higher gr uh, graphics ultra graphics medium graphics where you can choose what type of graphics do you want just like on PC now on on the shadow PC you can do that obviously but I think if Google does this if they let you choose what type of graphics do you want I think that's going to be a huge benef benefit for people. But who's to say they're not going to do that? See, there's all these options they have. Here's the thing. Google has all of these options on the table. Are they going to use these options? Are they going to jump on it? I don't know. I don't know. I, I really don't know. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But I think it would be pretty cool if you could actually use a virtual reality and then use different types of graphics 
settings. <coughs> ah, shit. Must have been a Sasquatch. <clears throat> Battle Royale will be Google versus Microsoft. I know. All right, let's go. We only got two hours to go. Perfect. Once we complete our mission, Lilith has to promote me to Super General. Stand back! That was stealth. How have you survived this long? Relax. On Pandora, it's actually super weird. Typical, the not... Xbox and PlayStation will now, still exist, recruit, but they will exist on the cloud, on a cloud service in 2031. Meaning that uh, you'll have to sign up for the PlayStation and pay a monthly subscription. If you want to play uh, 4K, you got to pay a certain amount. If you want to play 8K, you have to pay a monthly subscription, certain amount. Uh, same thing with the Xbox. You want to play 8K, you got to pay a certain subscription uh, amount monthly for it. Uh, most of the television sets will come with the uh, apps of Xbox and PlayStation. So when you buy a television, you already have the built-in Xbox and PlayStation and Nintendo app to good to go. Just press it on your remote, and your remote will be also a controller. So you'll have a controller and a remote at the same time. Uh, all of that will be available uh, by 2031, and I think that's where it's going. Um, yeah. I could be, listen, I'm not Elon Musk. I'm not uh, Nikola Tesla, so I, I don't know 100%, but I think that's where it's going to go. And then you'll be able to connect your virtual reality. Your virtual reality will be using a Wi-Fi, a very powerful Wi-Fi to connect to your television and the server. So with the Wi-Fi, it will be very light, lightweight. You put it on, and you're good to go. Remember, less cables, less hardware, more space, more convenience. No That's, That's where we're going. Remember, the, the houses... And the apartment's going to be less stuff. It's going to be more breathable. Uh, the electric car is going to advance. The air is going to be less polluted. All of this stuff's going to advance. Eventually. Well, that's my prediction. I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, Jesus. I could be, like, super wrong yes, about all of this. Of wicked, huh? <sighs> Got my gun over here. Here we go. Pick it up. These guns, like myself, aren't beholden to their primary function. I can dance and sing. And some yeah. Guns well, I'm trying to make it plausible, Stephen. You know, I want to be realistic. You know, what I mean, uh, I don't want to say 20, 25. I want to be realistic. You know, we. I have to look at it from a realistic point of view, and uh, that's what I'm. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm giving predictions based on a plausible point of view wait here I'll talk my way in become the hey look king, at this this is crazy let me look at the mouse wow look Watch at the mouse man holy the shit this is crazy that I can jump on the browser and Anyone just there? start like that's crazy man It's a browser. Hello, bloodthirsty maniac. It is I, Claptrap, Slayer of the Destroyer, and Super General of the Crimson Raiders. We have you completely surrounded. Open the I know, it is. It is kind of strange. I will be merciful. Uh, yeah. Can you guys see the controller? They might call themselves Can you guys see it now a little bit better? Hold on. Bandits, and bandits are incredibly stupid. Remember, when it comes to input lag and latency, it's something that you have to, it's something that you have to uh, feel it. You know, you have to feel it in your hands to, to, to truly, to truly know what it's like. Oh yeah, this is, this is smooth, man. Oh yeah, dude. 
My hunt is never ending. This is good, man. As long as you have that... Listen, right now, the only problem is the internet infrastructure. And I said it from the beginning. Uh, technology is there, but the internet infrastructure is the problem. Uh, these companies have to make some kind of a deal with uh, the uh, internet service providers. They have to talk to them. They have to make some kind of uh, deal so the people are not being charged data cap uh, for usage of the bandwidth. Uh, that's like the only issue right now, in my opinion. That's the only issue, is the internet, internet service providers. Technology is here. Hold on. I got killed. It's been working pretty good, man. Like I said, I'm very impressed as to what they're doing with this technology. Uh, and it's also interesting to find out that uh, the team that worked on the Azure worked on Google Stadia. And I mean, that's interesting. I don't know if you guys heard about that, but... What's up, Ellen? How you doing? I don't know if you guys can see the, the trigger. Hold on. Like that, there we go. Trying to find out what's the best position on my camera. There we go. I know Claptrap can be a little claptrap, but he's still one of us. You're gonna have to save him. I'll be there soon. Oh yeah. So many uh, tech kids ten years from now, ten years ago, and their heads will explode. They're the ones that are growing with this tech and the great adopters in the future. This will become normal. Uh, you know, kids nowadays are born with the uh, with the tablets, phones, uh, internet. So uh, it will just become a normal thing. <clears throat> and yes, robots will become part of our life as well. Uh, that'll happen. You know, the Blade Runner type of scenario will happen. You'll have robots running around helping us out. Uh, yeah, man, all of that stuff. Uh, you'll have robots on the spaceship. Where they're going to be taking care of the astronauts. Put them in a hypersleep. Uh, taking care of the ship. Making sure everything's running smoothly. Uh, this is inevitable. You know, this is, this is going to happen. Uh, there's just... You know... Arthur C. Clarke was right, but the thing is, he was just way off. He was way too early. Like, uh, Arthur C. Clarke was way too early when he says 2001, 2003. Uh, he was way off back in the 60s. Uh, okay? Because he didn't calculate properly about this little uh, gap that we're going to have in between 80s and 90s. He didn't think about that gap, 80s and 90s. Uh, but now I can clearly see it like by 4040, 4040, on 4040 you'll have robots navigating everything, taking care of everything, uh, computers, robots, yeah dude, yeah. There won't be any need for a president because you'll have the, the, the law will be installed inside the servers, AI, computers, Robots will take care of all of that. I shouldn't have talked about the future and robots. This is what happens when you talk about the future and robots. <laughs> all right, we're back. Uh, I had some issues some problems 
Hold on. There's my keyboard. You guys want to look at my keyboard? Here's my keyboard. Let me show you my keyboard. There it is. Um, pretty cool keyboard, by the way. You can pour water into it. Like, this is uh, waterproof. I can go take a shower with this and I'm good. I asked them to design this for me. Like this, so... Sorry guys, it was the um, it was a Google doesn't like when we talk about these things. You know, they don't like it when uh, when we mention the uh, the aliens and stuff like that. They're not, you know. We cannot talk about aliens in the future and the robots, robots running the future. Uh, if, if we talk about that, we get right away cut off. So they cut me off as soon as I mentioned uh, robots, 4040. That's it. Mr. 4K, what game right now showcases the true power of Stadia? The true power of Stadia? Oh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider for sure. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, uh, 100%. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, in my opinion. I mean, that thing looks glorious. Especially when you switch to uh, high resolution graphics. How dare you! You have been terminated. You have been terminated. You want ugly motherfucker. You are going to be terminated. I'm coming for you. There we I know I can take a bubble bath and just put a little monitor, waterproof monitor, 4K HDR waterproof monitor, and then when you're taking a shower, you can play the games. I mean that that's like, but yeah, I'm sure someone's gonna do it. But I also think this technology will make us lazy, dude. Um, you can already. Order food online. I mean, buy, uh, order groceries online. Have the groceries delivered to you. You can order medicine be delivered to you. Uh, you can order anything online. Just the press of a button and it's being delivered to you. So, um, and I think technology is already making people lazy because you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, I think the best way to lose weight, the best way to be in shape. It's to live off the grid, live in a, in a forest. Like, you gotta live in a forest, uh, build a cabin, hunt. Like, that's like the only way you're gonna like get in shape, for, for sure. <clears throat> yes, I'm gonna do that on Friday. I'm gonna, I'm gonna live stream that on Friday. I just gave you a little taste of a Terminator yesterday. Like a sneak peek on what's coming. But uh, that's going to be on Friday because everybody's off on Friday. A lot of people are off on Friday. And I think, uh, well, there will be two live streams, as a matter of fact. There will be two live streams. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11 and uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. We're going to do two, two streams. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11 and then Ghost Recon Breakpoint because I know you guys are really like stoked about Ghost Recon you want to see how it runs and all that so I think it's gonna run like it did on my PC it's gonna be exactly like my PC version uh, you know. the only difference is you don't need to spend money to buy a PC. You don't need to rent these expensive graphics cards. 
convenience, man. Convenience. All right, where is everybody? Oh, they're on the top, on, on, on the top of the roof, right? Look at the graphics, man. Damn. This is crazy. By the way, Mortal Kombat 11 looks sharp, man. But the graphics are sharp. Uh, it's native 4K, dude. Uh, there's, there's no question in my mind. What I was seeing yesterday, wait till I show you the video tomorrow. Uh, what I saw on my OLED or my QLED, uh, it's a native 4K, man, and it just looks... Uh, it's native 4K, dude. I mean, I have no doubt in my mind. I don't care what uh, what magnifying glass Digital Foundry says. Uh, that shit looks native 4K to me. With HDR, the HDR slider looks pretty good, too. Uh, the way you can uh, you can adjust the paper white, you can adjust the peak brightness, you can adjust uh, the bright levels, uh, the dark levels as well. So the uh, the HDR sliders are built in. And uh, as a matter of fact, Google Stadia worked with the uh, with the Mortal Kombat developers. They worked together uh, when they were building the game. They worked together with Google. To have the game ready for the Google Stadia servers and machines. Uh, you don't have to believe me, there's a video, you can Google it, you can search for it right now and you will see the developers of Mortal Kombat 11 talking about that, like how they're working directly with Google to to bring the uh, Google Stadia version to run its best. Hey Tom! Tom Provido, Tom Provido, how you doing? Hey mate, I got the Q90R TV. Can you post some settings of it? I've been tweaking it for for a month. Uh, like, what type of settings are you uh, interested in? Like gaming or movies or just like uh, all, all of the above? Let's hope the future has food in pill. I, you know what? You're not kidding, uh, Stephen. I'm not laughing because. Uh, that's exactly where it's gonna go, Stephen. Uh, it might be laughable to some people now. You know, oh, I want to eat my juicy steak. I want to eat my potatoes. No, son. In the future, a little pill put in your mouth, you're good to go. People are not gonna be overweight. Uh, you can. We're already seeing that there's less and less overweight people because. Uh, uh, they're they're not eating much. They're focused more on thinking. They're focused more on using their brain to create new stuff, new new uh, developments of applications and software. We're seeing more and more of like more skinny, skinny, shorter, shorter individuals. Uh, kind of like aliens. If you look at aliens, they're like very very thin. Uh, they have a big head, diamond, big head shape. Maybe that's what's going. Maybe that's what's going on. We're headed to become exactly what they are. From the primates to, uh, you know, <laughs> cavemen, all the way to what they are. Dude, I don't want to go. Listen, uh, it's already getting... Uh, I, you see, this is why I don't like to take the red pill and go down that rabbit hole. Because once you go down that rabbit hole, dude... You can't even focus. You are like dr dripping. You are like falling through through a different dimension, and it's freaky. It is freaky. But I don't know. I have some visions, dude. I have these visions. I don't know where it comes, dude. I have all kinds of visions, man. I don't know where I'm getting all these visions from, dude. I can like, I can remote. I have this like visions where I can vividly remote view something like in the future, like like 11 years from now, 20 years from now, I can like vividly like see some things. Not like through a fog, but like vividly I can I can imagine things where they're going to go. And it's strange, dude. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what to tell you, man. I don't ask for these visions. They just come to me and I and I see them. <clears throat> <laughs> Tom Previto, SDR and HDR, 
for PlayStation 4 for movies. I might make a video about it, uh, Tom. Possibly maybe uh, Thursday night. Possibly Thursday night. I might do some videos on that for the SDR and HDR. Like I'll give you my like what my standard dynamic range uh, presets are versus the HDR for the movies and for the games. So basically you want something for your cable, SDR, and then you want something for your games, HDR, and then you want a preset for your movies, HDR. Okay, so I'll have that for you on Thursday. I'm gonna go ahead and make that video like late Thursday night, around maybe midnight. Maybe you'll see it on Friday morning. Uh, so I'll, I'll make that video. It'll, it'll be done by the end of this week. Because it's difficult for me right now to give you the list of uh, presets. It's something I want you to see uh, through a video so you understand why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. Why I chose the presets that I chose, you know. Yeah, you're welcome, man. I'm pumped. Uh, can you guys... Are you guys having a difficult time seeing this controller? Uh, hold on. I hope you guys can see it. Oh, shit. This ran. This runs better than my, my than my uh, AMD card, dude. Remember, uh, I was having a difficult time running this on my AMD. Remember when it first uh, when it first came out, I was having issues with the Borderlands 3 and the AMD card. Imagine how much time I had to spend. You know what? Here's a great example. Imagine the kind of nightmares I had with with trying to run this game on. Uh, on my graphics card, on my AMD Radeon 5700 XT. Imagine the kind of nightmares I had to endure. And look at this, click of a button, everything's taken care of for me. I don't have to worry about anything, everything's updated for me. Um, man, I need a shotgun, I need something. Give me something, dude. I need, I need, a, I need a gun. Dude, I need something, man. Something, anything. What do we got here? Come on, dude. There we go, there we go, there we go. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Hold on. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Go, 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 go. Run, run, Forrest, run. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Come here. Come on. Shit, shit. I need more ammo. Ammo, I'll pump ammo. Come here. Jesus, this guy just won't die. I need more ammo. Ammo, Apom. Ammo. Damn it, Apom. Ammo. Hurry up, hurry up, man. Without ammo, I'm screwed. Got him. It seems the human Definitely smooth, bro. And it's funny that I'm using. Uh, people think this is a Stadia controller. This is my. Xbox One S controller. This is how Mr. 4K journey started back in 2016. It all started from Xbox. It all started from me helping out Phil Spencer. In a way, I did help Phil Spencer. No, really think about it. In a way, I did help 
Microsoft, and I have videos to prove that. No one was dedicated to the Xbox One S the way I was dedicated. No one was doing the uh, Xbox One S videos the way I was doing it. And no one pushed the sales of the Xbox One S the way I pushed it, with the same exact controller. And if people think I'm BSing, you guys know I'm not BSing. You guys can go look up those videos. Those videos are there. Early 2016. March 2016. I bought my first Samsung 4K Blu-ray player. And uh, I bought the Xbox One S. You know. Aura are even more savage than the beasts. But I also have to be honest as well. I have to mention Joe. I have to mention Joe. I have to give credit to Joe. Because uh, 1316 Killer Joe, uh, he really got me inspired to, to get into 4K. You know, he really kind of pushed me to, to get inspired with the 4K. Because uh, everybody else was saying, oh, 4K is too expensive. We're not ready for 4K, even if it's upscaled. We're not ready for high dynamic range. There's not that many games. There's not that many movies. Uh, and guess what? Joe proved all of us wrong. And I'm glad that I, that I believed in him. And I'm glad that I, that I got inspired by Joe to, uh, to jump into the 4K. He was mainly a comedian. You know, Joe was a comedian. He did comedic stuff. His videos were about comedy. But a lot of people got butt hurt because they couldn't, they couldn't take a joke, you know. So I have to mention him as well. But the whole thing started from, from Xbox. So in a way, in a way, if people, if I wanted to use a, if I wanted to be an Xbox fanboy, crap gamer, you can't even hold a glass of water to me. I'm the biggest Xbox fanboy. Just look at my videos from 2016. Look at my analytics and the, the amount of Xbox fans that I have subscribing to me and watching my videos. I know the majority of my subscribers are Xbox owners. I know that. How do I know that? Because I can look at the analytics, I can look at the statistics, and I know uh, that's the case. So if I wanted to, I could be, I could hold the title of being an Xbox fanboy easily if I wanted to. I could easily hold that title to be an Xbox fanboy. Uh, but I'm not going to do that, obviously. But if I, if I wanted to, I could easily do that. Oh, man, thank you so much, Tom. Thank you so much, brother, man. You didn't have to do that, but thank you so much. I really appreciate it, man. Hun you didn't have to do that. Thank you so much for the $125. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, like I said, if you have any recommendation, if you have any uh, requests for a video, I'll definitely do that for you, bro. And uh, I'm also going to make you part of my Blue Army. So, Tom... Uh, you're gonna become part of the blue army meaning that if if someone gives you a hard time you have the ability to remove them block them and uh, you'll have that ability now why because you know I appreciate what you've done obviously you didn't have to do it but I appreciate that you did you know it's definitely appreciated and thank you so much Tom Provido thank you Provido Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it, Tom Provido. Thank you. Now it's really nice of you to do that, man. And please do send those requests, you know, on my community forums, on my, uh, on my chat rooms, on my comments. Let me know what do you want to see. You know, what exactly would you like to see? I already have a request for Mortal Kombat 11 Terminator. Uh, And I already have a request for some other games like Ghost Recon, Breakpoint, so. What's up, Evie Nash? How you doing? 
you know what? Since we're doing this, since we're doing this, I guess we can do a little bit of a... Uh, I still got time. I got like hour and a half. I got hour and a half before my stream ends because I have to be somewhere tonight. But I guess we can throw in some comedy. We can uh, we can switch to to uh, Mortal Kombat 11, and we can do some Arnold. We can do some Arnold stuff. Uh, but what I'm gonna try to do, I'm going to uh, remove my camera, and uh, I'm just gonna pretend that I'm Arnold. Uh, so we're gonna do that. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna exit this game obviously just give me a second I'm going to exit this let me see uh, quit the portal yes and then we're gonna jump to Mortal Kombat as Arnold I'm gonna do an Arnold voice it's gonna be a lot of fun it's gonna be a lot of fun and uh, we're gonna do that right now we're gonna jump on it we're gonna jump to Mortal Kombat uh, this is for Tom we're gonna do this for Tom you know it's gonna be fun I'm gonna remove my myself from the uh, from the visuals so that way you're not paying attention to me you're paying attention to Arnold and you're gonna listen to me talk as Arnold as he's fighting so we're gonna make it funny though so we're gonna do that really quick here we go all right, so let's do this. It's going to be a lot of fun. Where is my controller? All right, back to the game. And I'm going to disappear. You've been terminated. All right, so we're going to do this. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're gonna we're gonna have some fun with this. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I gotta bring my microphone a little bit closer. I'll have to adjust uh, the audio here, cause I don't wanna I don't want his voice to be heard. I want only my voice to be heard while we're doing this. It's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Look at the quality on this thing, man. It's just ridiculous. All right, here we go. This is for Tom, Tom Provido. Come on, you girly man, stop looking at me like that. You have the clear vision. I have the clear vision. You don't. Don't talk to me about this. No time to do the workout. There is a plenty of time. 24 hours. You sleep for six hours. You still get time to do it. You got 18 hours to kill, to work out. Say, my, my gym is too far away. Bullshit. It is a, you can make a gym in your house. Do some sit-ups, pull-ups. Do some crunches. There's something you can always do. You can even work on your refrigerator. Just use your refrigerator to do some push-ups. Move the refrigerator down to the floor. And start doing push-ups with your refrigerator. <laughs> Here. Who are we going to fight now? Here, Johnny Cage, you sleeky bastard. I'm coming after you. You hear me? No, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. This is this is uh, my bad. My bad. <laughs> All right, let's do this right. Here, yeah. who wants to be next? You, Johnny Cage, gonna be next now. Bastard. We're going to fight here. That's a Skynet. I don't want to hear the naysayers saying you can't do this, you can't do that bullshit. Well, you didn't bring your headphones to the gym. The hell with your headphones. Just do it. Get there. I am back to be or not to be. Nailed to be terminated now. You, I'm going to shove those glasses up your ass. Here, come here, you bastard. That's just tickled me. Doesn't do nothing for me. 
you bastard. Come here. You you hit like a gloomy man over here. This is a bullshit. Come here. Here. I'm the Schnitzelinator. Before I was a Terminator, I was a Schnitzelinator. Before I became the Governator, I was a Terminator. And after I was the Governator, I became a Terminator again. That the older Terminator, it doesn't matter. I still did it. I came back. I don't complain. You're just complaining there. With your stupid glasses over here. Come here. You bastard. Ah! This is not... This is bullshit here. This can't be happening. No. You took my Asuka. You bastard. Alright, enough of the bullshit here. Come here. Don't laugh at me. I might be the, the Terminator, but I can still jump around. I can still do it. You bastard. Here. Stick around with my foot. Up your ass. Come. Drop the cookie. I'm right here. Drop your glasses now. This is bullshit. What's happening? Jim Cameron, this is your fault. You made me look like a girly man. Too much feminism in here. The dark fate. You put me in a feminist movie, you bastard. <laughs> there you I'm growing a man tits over here. This is a bullshit. I'm older, but I'll come back to be better. I'll come back to be better and better than ever. Come here. You bastard. You bastard. Come here. Come here, you bastard. Suck on that. This is a total bullshit here. Screw you, Jim Cameron. You bastard. You never put me in the avatar. Why I'm not in the avatar? I could be the godfather of the avatars. I could be the one to say, I created this planet. I created these smurfs over here. These blue beings. But you never put me in the movie, you bastard. <laughs> Who is this joke over here? Come here. Come out here, you bastard. I'm the Schnitzelinator. The famous Austrian Schnitzelinator. Come on. I'm going to take you to the chopper. I'm going to take you to the chopper with me. Ah! I'm too old for this shit. Screw you, Jim Cameron. Ah! I'll need a vacation. Ah! Ah! Spaghetti, you bastard. I mean, I'm really torn now. You broke my heart with the tomato. <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit. We're gonna do this again. We're gonna do it proper this time. And you bastard. You shady bastard. I'm gonna fight you for real. There won't be any more girly punches over here. It's gonna be the, the real schnitzelinator punches here. You better be ready for me now. I do have the black buster. I am the black buster, you bastard. Go watch the commando. Go watch the predator. Why are you still floating in your daddy's not sacks? I was making movies. You bastard. <laughs> Come on. This is not funny. I'm older, but I'm still bolder and much older, bolder Terminator with the gray hair. Don't laugh at me, you bastards. <laughs> Don't laugh at me now. This is too much bullshit here. Right now, I don't care. I'm just gonna go touch the buttons and then press. Screw you! Bullshit. This is bullshit. I'm a Terminator. How do you do that? <laughs> what is going on over here? There's like a Twilight Zone here. This is bullshit here. Come on. Come here, come here. You come to me here. This is turning into a Conor McGregor match. I'm gonna tap out. I don't wanna tap out like the Conor McGregor. I will not join the proper 12. I shit on the proper 12 right now. <laughs> come on. Get here. Get your ass over here. Get your ass to Mars. You better get your ass to Mars now. 
do it, do it, don't they just talk about it, just do it, come on, you hit like a grilly man with a cookie, you hit like a SJW with a cookie, and you didn't drop it, come here, that's right, you bastard, now, show me what you can do, show me what you can do now, now's the time, time to shine, uh -uh. come on, step back, you bastard, Come on, screw you, I'm going to win this, I don't care, whatever it takes, even night and day, if I have to fight you, I will fight you, I'll come back from the future, I'll fight you all the time, anytime. Shit, nothing here. Come on. Here, there, there. Come on, you bastard. Ah, shit. <laughs> this is bullshit here. Okay, let's do something else here. I'm going to do retry this again now. Here, I come here to be or not to be. You leave it to be terminated. You are going to be terminated. Is that better? You bastard. You hit like a girl, man. You need to hit proper like this. This is how you do it. Like a schnitzelinator style. I'm not even a terminator. Who told you I was a terminator? I'm a schnitzelinator. I have a schnitzelinator mechanism inside of me. Not a cybernetic mechanism. It's a schnitzelinator mechanism. You better believe it. It's like butter. You better believe it. <laughs> Come on. You bastard. Terminator wins. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Here the next round, we do this next round right now. We do it. Do it right now. Here. Here. Come on. This is it. Right here. Enough is enough. Come on. Don't make me wait all the time. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Here. You bastard. Come on. This is bullshit. This is all your fault, James Cameron. You did this. You did this. You put me up to this. To the stupid Dark Fate movie. Why did I sign up for this shit? I should have never signed up for that garbage. Here. Suck on that, you bastard. There. Stick around. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> we kicked ass well there you have it guys that was for Tom I wanted to do that for Tom so thank you Tom for the 125 bucks man I appreciate it I just felt like uh, uh, I do something for you really quick to keep it entertaining we will do this separate uh, on Friday, because I don't want people to think that I'm, you know, spamming and, and misleading people on, you know, on my uh, title. So I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, but this is for you, man. I appreciate what you did. You didn't have to do it, but I definitely appreciate that, man. Thank you so much for that $125. I really appreciate it. All right, so let's get back to our normal programming. Whatever that means. <laughs> oh, so one second. Look how quickly you can exit and continue where you left off. Look how easy that is, man. And see, no one talks about this. Like this, this convenient way of playing. Click, push of a button, and you're good to go. Now, let me get my camera. Where's my camera?
Oh, I'm on the green screen. I'm on the green screen. Mean machine. There we go. Hold on a second. That's better like this. So you guys can, can, can see it better. All right, let's get back to Borderlands 3. And look at this. Just like that. Continue. Boom. Very easy. Uh, you know. Here, let me show you the... Uh, hold on. There, the controller. So you guys can see the controller. I mean, if you if you look at the the Mortal Kombat, how quickly I'm able to go to one game, come back to another game, uh, just like that, man. And that's that's what people want. That's what people are looking for. They're looking for something easy, quick, convenient. Don't have to wait for downloads or updates or none of that nonsense. So you know. Hopefully my camera, uh, there it is. You guys can see it, right? There we go. Children of the Vault. You know, a lot of people ask me, those of you who are on the fence about Google Stadia, uh, does it really feel like you are playing from a console or like you're playing from a PC? And the answer is yes. You really forget that you are streaming something. You know, you just don't see that. You don't, you know, I know how bad PlayStation Now is uh, with their streaming. I know how bad GeForce Now is. This is not PlayStation Now. This is not GeForce Now. This is totally different. You know, it's a. it's not like your next just another next cloud gaming it's a cloud gaming more advanced cloud gaming and that's what it is guys <clears throat> oh yeah no issues uh, but according to uh, some other youtubers out there uh, it didn't run good you know some people are saying that uh, Mortal Kombat 11 was unplayable and da 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 hey jackknife how you doing Well, I think they can, they'll be able to do 140, uh, 120 frames per second uh, in 2020 on the PC, on your browser. If your monitor supports 120 frames per second, I think you're going to be able to do that. And if your monitor supports a free sync, you'll be able to do both 120 frames per second, 120 hertz, and a free sync at the same time. Oh, yeah, I think they're going to put... HDMI 2.1 with uh, with the new graphics cards. The magnet controls are on the second floor. I'm pretty sure we're gonna see that on um, four K hundred twenty FPS. I don't think we're there yet, but eventually it's gonna happen. What's up, Alan? How you doing? Sorry to hear that, bro. Uh, just hang in there, man. I are, are you still in a house? Um. Hold on. I'm losing my internet. No. I I gotta I gotta get the Comcast to check this out see what's going on all right we're back <laughs> mm. 
sorry about that guys I'm gonna have to uh, here we go I'm gonna have to call my internet service provider and have them check out my uh, modem and router to see what's going on because uh, I shouldn't be having these hiccups and, and I'll, I'll have to come out they'll probably have to replace my modem I think something's wrong with my modem so they'll need to come in to replace that modem or something because I've been having some kind of issues with my modem my gateway um, Tom do I turn on the game motion plus on my Samsung TV uh, I only do that on like um, sports like if I'm watching a football game I do that on a football game I do that on a hockey game only for the sports if I'm not watching sports if I'm not watching UFC or stuff like that I usually turn that off uh, I don't use it on the movies uh, because the movies are really not filmed at high frame you know at the high frame uh, for you to to have that super smooth motion uh, I, I think personally the movies look better when they're not using that motion flow you get to see the movie the way it was supposed to be the way the the, the film director intended it to be uh, I would only use a fast moving images motion flow to duplicate the, those images to make it look like a soap opera I would only do that on a, on a sports and I think the reason it exists it's because of the sports like the action smoothness it's really for the sports so that way you can have a more of a fluid live picture when you're watching uh, a football or a UFC or hockey or NBA so um, that's what I only would use it for I would just use it for that do I believe in the ghost of paranormal stuff um, I always keep an open mind um, I've seen stuff I can't explain so yeah the answer is yes I do believe in that stuff but I don't think about it too much you know uh, I don't think about it because I mean what's the point you know it's it's some different realm that I that is beyond me and uh, I just leave it alone I don't think about it you know if I seen something I've seen it I mean you know it is what it is whether it's a Sasquatch or whether it's uh, some some stuff you experience you've seen something you've seen a you know a, a glass blow up uh, or, or you know a bottle of uh, beer blow up or a plate from the kitchen fly out and hit the hit the floor stuff like that so I mean there's stuff out there you know th there's there's so much about our planet that we don't know and uh, people need to realize that if you when it's a clear sky when it's a clear sky and you look up in the sky and you look at all the all the infinite of stars and star systems uh, you gotta ask yourself what is that what is that all about how did that start what are we doing here what's this planet all about why is that moon there uh, there's there's so much we don't know uh, it's impossible that we discovered everything in past three thousand four thousand years that we check every acre of this planet uh, it's impossible for us to know what's what's going on out there uh, so yeah I always uh, I believe in, in anything and everything I believe you know and uh, I've seen stuff and so I think you can function better if you actually accept that fact I think you're gonna function better you're not gonna freak out you're not gonna have a panic attacks if you accept the fact that hey these these there's so much here that we don't understand so accept that you know if you don't accept that and you live in this um, this philosophy of uh, we know everything the human knows everything and therefore nothing to worry about that's a very uh, naive and stupid way to live in my opinion uh, it's impossible for human beings to know everything there's no way now, we know certain things we have knowledge of certain things but it's impossible for us to know everything to have answer for everything no way there's a lot of stuff out there that we can't explain and uh, 
it is what it is. We'll just have to accept that. You'll just have to accept that fact. Uh, if, if you live in a house that's haunted, it's got some haunted stuff in there, leave. Leave. Sell the house. Leave. Don't be a hero. Leave. You're not welcome there. Leave. Okay. If a Sasquatch is throwing rocks at you or throwing these logs of woods of these trees, timber trees, leave. They don't want you there. They're, that's a sign of a warning for you to back off. Don't go there anymore. You're not welcome there. So um, it's one of those things. You got to use your brain. You got to use your head. You have to be smart. Don't try to be a hero. Uh, don't try to, to bring ego into it. Uh, all the people who brought ego, who brought this badass look to it, uh, they, chickened out. they chickened out because they find out, hey, there's stuff out there that I can't control. There's stuff out there that's way above me, so I'll have to respect that. It is what it is. And if you live like that, I think you can function better. I mean, you keep it to yourself. You don't have to tell people about it, you know, because people react a certain way when you talk about this stuff. But you can keep it to yourself. Remember, as long as you know what you know, Remember, you're not living your life to convince other people to believe in what you know. The idea is for you to know what you know so you can move through life smoothly. Okay? So that way nothing will shock you. So if you see something happening, you're not going to be in panic. You're not going to freak out. Uh, you're going to function much, much better. And if you accept that fact... I think you're going to function much, much, much better. Remember, it's your life. Uh, you don't live your life to convince other people. Like my whole story about a Sasquatch was that I know it's not going to be a popular video, but I didn't make that video to convince people, to tell people, hey, I know they exist or this or that. It was for me to tell them my story. Whether they believe it or don't, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's about me telling you what I have experienced. And then you can take it however you want to. It doesn't really matter. My job is not to convince anybody. My job is not to force anybody. It's a free will. Either you believe me or you don't. You have that right. That is your right. No one can force you otherwise. Okay? So if, if somebody is forcing you to believe something, then you're not free. you got to be able to make your own judgment, and no one should take that away from you. But I know what I know for myself. I know what I've been through. I know what I have experienced, and that's all that matters to me, what I have experienced. And if you put yourself in that spectrum to think like that, then you're going to function much, much better in life. And that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> My E8, you means? No, Dominic. It's been a one year. It's a one year anniversary. I still don't have any issues with my, uh, with my E8. Listen, uh, from now on, whatever new OLED that I buy, it's going to be E-series, not a C-series. I'm going to stuck... I'm going to be stuck with the E series, E9, E10, E11, E12. The E series, in my opinion, is the best OLED LG model, in my opinion. Because what I have done so far with the E series, I have put that OLED through so much test, through so much stress, and I'm, I'm still blown away that, that the damn thing's still working after a year. A year and I use that OLED like no one else has used it I have tested that thing with a computer with with the 4k movies programming dude I even left it at night to run I didn't even turn it off when I went to sleep I just let it run nothing no retention no burning no nothing I never had that problem, Dominic. None of that stuff. You know, these retentions, these, uh, these uh, what you call them, um, 
enclaved, burnt images. Never had those issues. None of that stuff. Um, the white looks like white. The red looks like red. Orange looks like orange. And black looks as pitch black. Perfect viewing angles. Really, um, I can't say nothing bad about the, the E8 OLED. I mean, um, in, com in comparison to all the other TVs, uh, the OLED can take a shit on all of them. Really, in comparison. I mean, really. They can't even hold a glass of water. Uh, I have to laugh when I see the uh, Ryan Reynolds with a QLED Samsung commercial. Really, dude. I know he's getting paid to do that commercial, but dude, go with the OLED, will you? Come on, Ryan. Deadpool. <laughs> I like Ryan, he's cool, but I know he's getting paid for that commercial. You know, I don't think he gives a shit it, w what you have, QLED, OLED, you know, I don't think he cares. It's just they paid him a good money and it's like, okay, this is an easy, uh, quick money cash grab. Let me do a commercial for QLED and let's do it. Uh, E8 had the same processor as a C8. Uh, yes, the same processor. Uh, the only difference is the cosmetics. Cosmetics are different, and it has a Dolby Atmos soundbar built into it. And let me tell you, the built-in speakers on the E8 are just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, you don't even need a soundbar. If you're going to buy an E8, you don't need a soundbar. Man, the, the speakers on the E8 are just mind-blowing. Yeah, picture on glass. You don't have to worry about your kids damaging it. You don't have to worry about you spilling, uh, you know, uh, drink on it or something. You good. It's good to have that glass. It is heavy. Listen, one downside to E8 because of that glass, it's a heavy guy. You know, you're going to need a two people to help you to put that TV on. E8, it's heavy. Okay. But you have that protection you have that glass you know and that glass protects the screen you know but that glass is heavy I'm not gonna lie it is the son of a bitch is heavy <laughs> you, 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 you can't move that TV all the time that TV is heavy dude that OLED it's heavy but it's a good protection for your screen alright what are we doing here Oh. picture on glass from what I understand of blood you're doing it wrong no uh, only the 9 series only the C9 uh, has the G-Sync as far as I know uh, C9 series I don't know about the E9 but I know the C9 has a G-Sync uh, not sure about the E9 but I know the C9 has a G-Sync I, I imagine the E9 all of the 9 series going to have a G-Sync I mean um, I imagine that, that they will. Uh, Dominic, I'm not sure, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I think they can do with a high speed uh, HDMI 2.0. I'm not sure. I think you can use your high speed HDMI to do it. Uh, hello there. Well, hello there. I think you should, Superman. I think you should. Uh, I mean, you can get one for two grand. They're getting affordable now. They're not super expensive. You can you can get it, man. You can buy one. Seriously, thanks for answering my call. We might not have the numbers, but with a badass like you, we've got a fighting. Who knows, Dominic? Uh, uh, we'll have to wait and see when it comes to PlayStation Five. You know, I don't think about it too much on what it can do and what it can't do. Uh, I don't go on speculations. I just go by uh, the experience. You know, the way I'm going to run my YouTube channel in 2020, and I think something I want to say something here, the way I'm going to run my YouTube channel in 2020, it's really to test 
stuff myself. You know, uh, it's fine. I'll see what the other people are saying. I'm going to read what the other people are saying. But at the end of the day, I'm going to test everything myself. I want to test everything myself because that way I can see for myself what this machine can do. What are these? What what are these? Uh, what, what are its pro pros and cons? You know, like what pros that it has, what cons, and all the positives and negatives. I want to see what this device can do. And the only way for me to do that is if I try it out myself. Like the one mistake I made, couple of well, many mistakes I made a uh, couple of years ago was the fact that uh, I was quick to jump in on bandwagon of listening to other people saying, oh, the OLED sucks, has a burn-in, stay away from it, go with the QLED, QLED's the best, or go with the edge lid, stay with the edge lid, and, uh, you know, I was listening to other people, same thing with, uh, with uh, home theater speakers and all that, listening to the other people instead of trying it out myself. Uh, the one thing I'm going to do in 2020 is I'm going to test everything myself. I'm going to try things out myself uh, because that's the best way to do it. <laughs> you know, try it out for myself and see if it's true. If it's not true or true what people are saying. And I think that's the best way to, to do a proper review on something is for you to try it out for yourself. Because I've been so disappointed uh, in the past two years by listening to other people. You know, other people saying, you know, oh, you need to go with this monitor. This monitor is the best monitor. Or, or you need to go with this. You need to go with that. Or this is the best. Or this is not the best. And vice versa. And I was disappointed by every single one of those uh, recommendations. So the best thing to do is, for me, beginning of 2020 is try everything myself. I want to try every single device, whether it's a PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, or whatever, new Nintendo, or what have you, a shadow PC gaming versus Cloud uh, Stadia gaming versus xCloud versus uh, Amazon versus Steam. The best way to test is to try it out myself. Same thing with the games. Uh, you know, uh, testing out the games for myself. Games like Cyberpunk. How does the Cyberpunk runs on my PC versus Stadia Cloud versus Shadow PC versus the consoles. How does it look like on the X, Series X? How does it look on the PlayStation 5 versus the Cloud versus the PC that I have? Etc., 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 etc. And I think if you do that, you get a much better, uh, broader experience of what these devices can do. Instead of just listening to one side and ignoring everything else, you know. No, I don't, I never, that's the thing. Uh, I never had a burn in. Not just, I, neither one of my televisions. Uh, I had C6, B6, C7, and E8. I had four different OLEDs. Four. Four different OLEDs, and neither one of them had any issues. I look with you another time. It's your funeral. A year. Uh, 12 months a year and uh, I used it like I passed over 2,000 hours easily I passed 2,000 hours uh, and um, again no issues no problem Hold on. I really want to try this on a mouse and keyboard one of these days. 
But yeah, man, I never had any issues with a, with a E8 um, after 12 months. And I think I easily put over 2,000 hours because I use that TV like righteously. Testing it, a uh, bunch of movies, content, you name it, man. I have tested it. Uh, look at those videos that I have. I mean, just look at those videos that I did on the OLED. That tells you just how many hours I put into it. I did live streams from my OLED. Uh, I mean, you think by now, you would think with all of this negative talk, with all of this propaganda, you would think if this was all true, if all this propaganda was all true, you would think by now, this guy right here, after 12 months, after a year, you would think that I would get something. At least a retention, okay? Some, some kind of enclaved imagery. And I watch ESPN righteously. I watch other channels like uh, National Geographic with the logo righteously. I watch these channels that have these logos all the time. You would think by now that I would get something. Some kind of an issue. Some kind of a hiccup. Some kind of a problem. Never had that problem. Never had that issue. But the problem is, there's these individuals out there, and I know who they are. I'm not going to mention their names. Uh, they started opening their own YouTube channels, uh, and their, their channels are just simply to talk about controversy, to say that the OLED sucks, and here's why it sucks, so the other people will join their channel who don't like the OLED, and... They don't have any experience with the OLED, but they're more than willing to talk crap about the OLED on their channel to get more people to subscribe to them. Uh, I'm not going to say who these individuals are. You can figure out for yourself who they are on the YouTube. I'm not going to mention their names. I'm not going to give them any uh, spotlight. But me, I have tried everything. And, and the reason why no one can tell me otherwise it's because I tried so many televisions. And I have videos to, to prove that. Okay? And I can tell you from my experience that four different OLEDs that I had from B6, C6, C7, and now E8, you would think in course of all these years you would have think that maybe maybe something would have gone wrong what are the odds that nothing went wrong what are the odds if it's true if it's true what this uh, propaganda is being put out there about the OLEDs if it's true if they're all saying the truth so then why is it that I don't have any issues why is it there's other people out there Tons of other people out there, they don't have any issues. Why is that? We all know why is that. Because there's individuals out there on the YouTube uh, willing to exploit this QLED versus OLED uh, subject to profit traffic and views. Majority of these guys, they don't even care about the televisions, okay? They're just using the televisions as the means to to make money and traffic and revenue okay but I'm not gonna say who these individuals are obviously you can go find out for yourself uh, and they're doing it for that reason me I'm not doing it for that reason I'm being honest you know I'm not gonna lie and tell you that it doesn't that something it's not working when it's working I'm not gonna tell you that Google Stadia sucks that it doesn't work when you clearly can see you watching this live stream that it works okay I'm not gonna go on for a bat for someone to say something for the sake of uh, holding a jersey flag for somebody I like to call it the way I see it I like to call it the way I experience it and so far my experience with the OLED has been great I'm not saying that the burning doesn't exist of course there's televisions uh, there's models out there especially the older models like a C6 people don't know how to use that television properly they're not taking care of that television okay 
they're just being careless and they don't understand how to use that TV and therefore it happens okay all right not everyone will take care of their equipment properly some people they don't care they come home they start smoking they throw shit around uh, they're careless all right everybody has a different way of living everybody has a different lifestyle of living you're not going to take care of your house the way maybe I take care of my house maybe you don't take care of your place maybe your place is a trash I don't know and maybe you don't give a shit about your TV and you let it run whatever forever everybody's different everybody has a different way of, of taking care of their things I can only tell you from my experience I never had any issues what are the odds that I never even not just OLED even the TCL Vertical people saying there's a vertical bending uh, issue on the TCL 6 series never had that issue never had that problem People talk about a vertical bending on a 900 E. I still have my 900 E no issues whatsoever Okay, people talk about vertical bending on the, the QLED. I never saw it and I still have QLED. So why is that? How could that be that all of these propagandas they're putting out there are false why well we all know why there's individuals out there the main reason for being on the YouTube it's for this it's for this me I'm not doing it for that you know it's a free will and if you donate you donate if you don't I don't pressure you to subscribe I don't pressure you to do anything I'm just here to tell you my experience with all of this equipment that I have you know All right, let's continue. And this is why I want to start 2020. I want to start 2020 uh, without listening to anybody's uh, points of view and views I want to try everything out myself you know if I want to try something I want to try it out myself and I have learned that now big time you can't trust other people opinion because you don't know their mindset you don't know what their mindset is are they being truthful are they being honest you don't know uh, so the best thing to do is to try it out yourself you got a 14 days I always tell people all right so you have to pay a little bit of restocking fee who cares right if the TV in two weeks and I think two weeks is more than enough for you to to see if the OLED is for you I think take a vacation take a couple of weeks off try out the TV test the TV and then if you don't like it you can always return it man you got 14 days to return the TV and I think now with the Christmas and holidays you got even more time extended for you to return the TV so you always have that option. You always have that option uh, to try it out. You know, I always tell people you have options to try it out and see for yourself and see for yourself. Because if you're going to listen to what other people are saying, you're always going to hit a dead end. You're never going to buy that TV because you're going to be on a fence. You're going to be sitting on the sidelines. You're like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I hear 50-50. You got to go try it out yourself, dude. You're always going to hear 50-50. Some are saying this, some are saying that. And you're like in between, you're like, I don't know what to think. Well, that's exactly why you need to try it out. For two weeks, 14 days, return to soccer if you're not satisfied, and you'll have your answers. That is the only way. All right. No one else can convince you. I cannot convince you. No one else out there will be able to convince you. You have to go ahead and you're going to have to try it out for yourself to see if this is really for you, if it's true about the burning, about the retention, and all this other crap that people are talking about, about the white color not being the white color, it's too yellowish. Uh, okay, all of that stuff you can find out for yourself. And that's how it should be, you know. That's how you should buy. That's how you should test everything. Even this device, Google Stadia. That's how you should test it. Try it out for yourself, man. Try it out for yourself. See if it's true. 
see if what Yong Ya is saying is true. See what the uh, everybody else is saying if it's true. Find out if what the gamer Nexus is saying is true. Find out for yourself. All right. LG C9 or Sony AG9 probably will be used for gaming. Ah, C9, dude. You're better with the LG. LG, uh, it's just, in my opinion, it has a better remote control, better user interface. Uh, Sony has that Chromecast. I'm not a huge fan of them having that Chromecast in there, man, honestly. You know, it's very sluggish, you know, that Chromecast, built-in Chromecast that they have, it's very sluggish, and, and I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, so I would say definitely LG, dude. If you're going to buy an OLED, brother, go with the LG, okay? Do yourself a favor, man. Go with the LG. How do I... I forgot. I used to know how to get through through here. Is it like this? Oh, okay. Well, look, man, I already spoke about Digital Foundry. Digital Foundry obviously doesn't like Stadia. They can't say nothing positive about Stadia. I mean, here I am. Uh, do you see Digital Foundry doing what I'm doing? Do you see them live streaming like I am live streaming right now, showing you this controller? No, you don't see them doing that. What do you see Digital Foundry do? Put a heavily edited video, a heavily edited video, with a uh, bunch of negativity. Stadia this, Stadia soft, Stadia terrible latency, Stadia breaking up, Stadia soft. Does this look like a soft imagery to you? Even at 1080p 60, does this look like a soft imagery to you? You know, here, why don't I, why don't I show you just how bad Google Stadia really is here, according to Digital Foundry, because I think I got some more time left um, I want to show you something really quick. Um, here. Let's go to one of my favorite games right here. Clearly, Google, I mean, clearly, Richard and Digital Foundry, they don't want to say nothing positive about Google Stadia. And I think they don't want to say nothing positive is because they're afraid. They are afraid of backlash. And, uh... They care about their business. Richard cares about his business. And God bless him, he should care about his business. He doesn't want the backlash. They have a lot of sponsors. So they want to make their sponsors happy. They don't want to lose the streak of, of reaching to 1 million subscribers. And they're going to reach 1 million subscribers pretty soon. Uh, in February, I believe, they're going to hit 1 million mark of subscribers. So I get it, what Richard's trying to do. God bless him, you know, it's his company, he wants to have a successful successful business, I have nothing against that. But, let's be honest here, um, he does not want to say anything positive about Google Stadia. You will not find a video of him saying anything positive about Google Stadia. And here's the latency, here, let me show you the latency, here. Look how terrible that is. Let's continue really quick here. Uh, and I've done the video. You've seen that video, right, even? You saw that video of uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider from my OLED. You saw how clean that is. You saw how smooth and sharp that is. You've seen the video. The video is there. It's in 4K and HDR. Go check it out, brother. It's all there. Google Stadia is not going to... I mean, uh, Digital Foundry is not going to do that. 
Yong Yeah is not going to do that. Uh, next uh, gamer Nexus, it's not going to. He doesn't talk about Google Stadia anymore. They're not going to talk about that here. Look how terrible that looks here. Let's uh, let's uh, use some photo here, photographer mode here. Let's see how bad this is. Here, let's see how bad this is. All right. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit more, get to the hair, like hold on, like this. Let's see how bad this is. They're not gonna do this. They're not gonna talk about this. They're not gonna mention the fact that you can use a higher resolution mode with 4K and HDR on the Chromecast Ultra. They're not going to talk about that. They're not going to talk about the fact that you can switch between a high resolution mode and a 60 FPS mode as well. I just, here's the thing, uh, uh, even, uh, and I think if people look, if, if people really want to examine my channel, if they have time, because I got over 4,000 plus videos, 4,500 videos, uh, 4,000 plus videos. I'm going to hit 5,000 videos next year. If people truly want to dig deep and examine my channel and examine my videos, they're going to see that I hold no flag for nobody. I'm not a fanboy of Stadia. I'm not a fanboy of PC. I'm not a fanboy of anything. I'm just somebody who enjoys new tech. I enjoy new technology, but I will not lie. For the sake of uh, subscription, for the sake of uh, likes, for the sake of me not losing any subscribers. I will not lie. I'm going to call it the way it is. Uh, other people, they're not going to do that because they're afraid of losing that momentum. Because they have sponsors and they don't want to make their sponsors unhappy. So there's that. Uh, and That's the major difference between me and others. Okay. What is the first thing you see when you start watching uh, Review Tech USA? He's going to talk about a BenQ monitor. He's going to talk about a cutting edge gamer because that's his sponsors. And God bless Rich. I have nothing against Rich. I like Rich. But hey, he's sponsored. He is sponsored. And therefore, he got to be careful on what he says. Okay, he wants to stay neutral. But at the same time, he will not say anything positive about Stadia because if he says something positive about Stadia, he's going to lose some of the subscribers. He's going to get a lot of backlash. And his sponsors from BenQ is not going to like that. His sponsors from Cutting Edge Gamer is not going to like that, getting the dislikes. So people, same thing with Young Yeah. What is the first thing you see with the Young Yeah? He pins his comment telling you to go ahead and donate the money to the Patreon. Check his merchandise. Go to his Patreon. He does not reply to any comments. He doesn't read the comments. He puts out the heavily edited video. And then he goes back, enjoy his money, come back, make another video. Based on whatever's trending. But he's very careful. He's not going to say something that's going to affect his business. Hey, I love him. I Listen, I understand what these individuals are doing. I'm not against that. I get it. But that's the, dip, that's the major difference even between me and them. I'm honesty here. I'm not going to lie. They're going to lie for the sake of this. That's the major difference. Huge difference, man. It's dramatic difference between me and them. And they know this. That's why they'll never mention me. That's why they'll never talk about me because they don't want to give me a spotlight. Uh, and they know that I'm right. <laughs> They're not going to publicly admit it, but they know I'm right. They know I'm right. And you don't have to be a brain surgeon. You don't have to be a uh, Area 51 uh, scientist or a physicist to understand this. This is very simple stuff. And I respect everyone's points of view. I respect everyone's points of view, but I know that uh, 
the reason why Richard and Digital Foundry and Young Yeah and all the other ones are not saying anything positive about Google Stadia. They don't want to say anything positive because they know if they do, there will be a huge mob of backlash coming their way. Tsunami. And I understand they got millions of subscribers. You're talking 1 million, 800,000, uh, 1 million subscribers. And out of that 1 million subscribers, you're going to have the mob tsunami of backlash coming in with all their other joint accounts, fake accounts, just bombarding with, with spams and, and hate and, and shit. And they don't want that. They don't want that. And I totally, I can respect that. I understand that. But, again, I, as an independent, I have to call it the way it is. You know, uh, I have to call it the way it is. You know. Stadia USA, can you come on my podcast, Stadia USA, uh, Anchor, when you have time? Sure, Stadia USA, uh, just let me know. Uh, on my community forums, let me know, and maybe we can arrange it. Maybe I can join you. We can have a talk about this. I also thought about doing something about Stadia uh, party chat where I thought about maybe having maybe 20 of you, 30 of you joining a party chat so we can talk about this. Uh, maybe we'll have somebody from Google join us and, and give us some pointers and whatnot. So, yeah, I would love to do it, man, for sure. Absolutely. I would love to do that. But here we go. I mean, look at this. This is um, no latency here. Clearly, you can see there is. I'm not pulling any tricks here. There's. This is live. This is live. What you're seeing, it's live. It's. It's not pre-recorded. I cannot cheat my way out of this. I cannot hoax this. I cannot put any hoax here. Uh, this is live. And um, maybe I can bring it a little bit closer here. Here. Here, hold on. Where's the button right here? The photo from Cozumel. Maybe that's a clue. And if you watch that video, if you see that video that I did on my OLED, on my E8, that is as sharp as uh, as the PC. Because if the compression was really bad, then it would be blurry. Guys, it would be, it would be like a VHS. If what Richard was saying, if it's true, if what Richard was saying was true, then the compression would be as equal as 480p DVD. It would be as equal as you watching 480p DVD. It would be terrible. It would be scrambled. It would be soft. It would be just but ugly terrible it would be like this look at this controller it would be kind of like this hold on it would be like that very blurry and very uh exposed with light well there's already a good codex you got uh, h.265 you got h.264 uh you know i mean look at this man here, let, let's do some more. Maybe I can. Uh... Well, actually, let's let's jump to here. Forget about this. Let's jump to. I think I still have time. It's eight twenty-four. I still have time. Let's uh, let's do this. For example, let's jump into um, Red Dead Redemption. Uh, no, actually, Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. Let's jump into a uh, Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, and you'll see just like uh, how good this thing looks. Uh, you are streaming in 4K with the Chromecast Ultra, but you have to subscribe to uh, Stadia Pro subscription. But you are streaming in, in 4K. Now, it's only available on Chromecast Ultra at the moment. Next year, in the future, they're going to allow you to have the ability 
on your computer to stream in 4K and HDR. And Google can easily do that. They shouldn't have a problem with a H.265 codec. They shouldn't have any issues with that. Uh, Windows HDR shouldn't be a problem for them to, to do that. So yeah, that's going to happen next year. Okay, so you will have that ability as well. And all you're going to have to do is just subscribe $10 a month. You won't have to buy any Chromecast Ultra unless you want to use Chromecast Ultra for your television, 4K HDR. You, you're going to need that. But if you just want to stream 4K HDR from your 4K HDR monitor, you'll be able to do that in uh, next year, in the future. And here's another thing that people don't talk about. Look how quickly I'm able to switch between these games. Look how quickly I'm able to switch between these games. They don't talk about that. They're not giving any positive feedback about that. Positive feedback means, hey, what about this? Why no one talks about this? You can't do this quickly, this fast on your console. You can't do this quickly, this fast on your PC. All right? How do I know this? Because I have a console. Because I have a PC. There's a bunch of updates. You have to sign in here. You have to sign in there. You have to wait for the firmware to download. Updates. All of that stuff takes time. Then your hard drive has to go ahead and uh, upload the game as well. Not to mention the fact that you have to download the game. You have to download the game, which takes a while. But they don't want to talk about that because that doesn't fit their narrative. Because that's a positive thing. And they're not going to talk about that. They don't want to talk about the fact that you can play Destiny as a local multiplayer. Okay, we got how many how many laptops we have? We have four laptops. Let's do a local uh, multiplayer, just like we did with the Xbox. Local LAN. Let's do it. All four of us. You got we got four laptops. Let's do a local multiplayer. We got eight laptops and the internet. Let's do a local multiplayer with eight of us. Like LAN network. No one wants to talk about that either. Uh, there's a lot of different things you'll be able to do with Google Stadia in the future. But these companies, like these YouTubers, they will not acknowledge that. They will not mention that. You know. <clears throat> I mean, look at the graphics here. This is all. This is 4K 60, easily 4K 60, and there you go. There's no latency here. We can check out the uh, photographer mode. Uh, where's the gameplay options? Oh, you look at this. Destiny runs smooth, no issues, very fast. Uh, I can exit this, I can get out of here, I can just start uh, Destiny 2 right away, and boom. And um, where is it? Right here. Just like that. Don't have to wait for any updates. Don't have to wait for any download. Don't have to wait for anything. Um, just like that. Boom. Done. Done deal. How long is it going to take you to, uh, to do this on, uh, on your PC? How long is it going to take you? On your console, how long is it going to take you? You know. Well, I don't think I have time because I have to get ready. I have to be somewhere tonight, Ivan. Uh, but I'll I'll talk about it on uh, my next videos. <clears throat> I mean, those videos that I have. I mean, the, the, there's your proof. You know, you guys can watch all those videos. Uh, it's all there. You know, people talk about input lag, latency. Well. Well, there you have it, you know. Where is this input lag? Here's, here's the thing people need to understand. When I went in to purchase this uh, thing, this Google Stadia, I went in purchasing Google Stadia knowing that I will expect to see a lot of crap. I was expecting nothing but shit and crap. But guess what? It was totally the opposite. Because of all the negativity, 
of all the propaganda that was being said about Google Stadia, I have found out once I got it that it was all bullshit. Okay? So there's that. All right. There's a video of Destiny 4K60 on my uh, on my OLED. Uh, I have a video of that. Check my uh, videos from three weeks ago. Uh, Alber Alberto, all those videos are there. Uh, be my guest to check them, brother. They're all there. It's all there, brother. Just scroll down three weeks uh, in the past. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that rain. Let's go. No issues, no problems. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Steady. I appreciate you too. I mean, look. Um, I felt... Some people said... Well, some people call me the ambassador now. Some people actually call me the ambassador of Stadia. Look, guys, I felt that it was wrong. Did I help Google a little bit through my videos? Maybe I did. But I did that because I felt that it was not fair. I felt it was not fair uh, to see company fail on wrong failed premises. They were all false. They said there's no 4K HDR. There's plenty of 4K HDR footage. They said that the uh, Chromecast Ultra overheats. Not true. It does not overheat. I still have my Chromecast Ultra plugged in and it's running nonstop. People said that there's a latency, terrible lag. People said that it's compressed with a soft, soft bitrate. Not true. I have every single video to prove that that it's not true. Okay, you don't see Gamer Nexus talking about uh, Chromecast Ultra burning and all that stuff. Nope, he doesn't talk about it anymore. He's back to talking about the PCs because he knows that it's been debunked. No one talks about there's no more 4K HDR videos. Uh, there's no more 4K HDR games on, on Google Chromecast on uh, Google Stadia. No one talks about there's no 4K HDR video uh, games. It's been debunked. There's plenty of 4K HDR games. That's been debunked. Latency has been debunked. Look at this. All right, I don't want to use a controller. Fine. Guess what? I'm going to use my mouse. Here's my mouse. You want to use my mouse and keyboard? There you go. There we go. Mouse and keyboard. Is, is that good enough for you? It's not good enough? Okay. All right. It's not good enough. So everything's been debunked. The only problem is this. And I said this on my previous videos. The only problem is this. Google Stadia needs to be more commuted. Uh, they need to communi commu communicate with us Google Stadia supporters. Uh, they need to let us know what they're doing. What's the plan for the January? What's the plan for the first quarter of, a two of, 2012, of 2020? 2020? What's the uh, plan for the third quarter, fourth quarter? What are you doing winter, spring, summer, fall of 2020? What are your plans? What plans do you have? They need to be more outspoken. They need to communicate with us a little bit more. Phil Harrison needs to be more on the spotlight. He needs to talk more about it. He needs to be uh, doing more interviews, talking about Google Stadia. You know, technology works. Technology works. It's been debunked. It works. The only problem right now is games. Getting developers on board, getting a bunch of games, bringing everybody on board, that's the next step. Okay? But technology works. No one can deny that. All right?
And, uh, well, he here's the thing. I felt bad, honestly. I was, uh, I really felt, I don't know what it is, but I woke up one day and my conscience said to me, hey, you know what, Mr. 4K dude, why are you doing this? You're not being fair. You know it's not true what they're saying. Uh, you tested it yourself. Uh, I felt that it's not fair for me to lie for the sake of reaching more subscribers, for the sake of me growing more subscribers. I felt, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell the people the way it is. Uh, I'm not going to bullshit people. I'm going to tell them exactly the way it is. If this was broken, if this service was broken, I would be the first guy. I would be the very first guy to tell you, stay away from this. But that's not the case. I mean, look at this, man. But somebody will say, you know, there's some trick. He's pulling a trick here. This is a trick. Sorry to, to, to burst your bubble. It's not a trick. Okay, I got some friend requests. Uh, okay. I'm going to add you as a friend. El, Guapo, El Guapon. El Guapon. You're going to be my friend now. I'm going to add you. There we go. Alright guys, so I'm going to have to call it quits. Uh, it's been two hours and a half. I did say it's going to be a short stream. Uh, thank you, Tom. I really appreciate what you did, Tom. You didn't have to do that, but thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Uh, Stadia USA, definitely. You know, you can hit me up on my community forums. We can maybe set this up. Or you can contact me through Steam. I mean, not Steam, uh, Stadia. You can add me on Stadia. For those of you who want to know what my name is, we can maybe do, maybe tomorrow night, we can do a party chat. I think tomorrow I'm not going to do any live streams. Tomorrow I'm going to do a party chat with Ghost Recon. So tomorrow night there won't be any live stream. But for those of you who do have Stadia, you'll be able to talk to me on Ghost Recon Breakpoint around 10.30 uh, Eastern Time tomorrow night. You'll be able to talk to me on the party chat. So on the party chat tomorrow, I'm going to invite everybody. Every single one of you here will be invited. No one will be left behind. And we'll have a party chat. We'll talk about this. Uh, you're welcome as well, Stadia USA. Maybe we can talk about me coming onto your podcast. So we can arrange that. Uh, so, yeah. We're going to do that tomorrow. And like I said, guys, uh, there you have it. You've seen me do Borderlands, you've seen me do this game, you've seen me do uh, Mortal Kombat 11, uh, you've seen me do Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, it's all there, you know, the, the evidence is there for you to look and check, that's why I have those videos, for you to go through them and check them, you know. Alright guys, again, appreciate it. I really appreciate you guys, every single one of you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Stadia. Thank you, Carl D. Uh, Alberto. Thank you also for being here. Alberto Salzar. Neil, Stadia USA. Uh, see, well, there's so many of you guys that show up. Evo Masta. Ivan, Ivan Maric. Thank you, Ivan Maric. Hvala, hvala, Ivan Maric. And of course, huge thanks to uh, Tom Provido. Tom Provido, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Like I said, if you have any requests, please don't hesitate to ask. Please do ask me. Contact me on Twitter. You guys can contact me on Twitter. I'm there as well. You can talk to me on Twitter. Uh, and actually, Twitter is a pretty cool place to contact me, direct message me, honestly. You can go there and go there. That's why I have that Twitter page, honestly. I don't post much on Twitter, but... It's a good way for you to communicate with me through Twitter. Tomorrow night, you can catch me on the party chat for the Ghost Recon Breakpoint. We can all join uh, co-op on the Ghost Recon Breakpoint. We can have a party chat. We can talk about it. Maybe somebody from Google Stadia will join us as well. If that happens, cool. That'd be awesome. Maybe somebody, uh, some other YouTubers whom I know, like a Stadia cast and... Uh, X Cloud Gaming, maybe they're going to join in as well. If that happens, cool. If not, doesn't matter. 
but we'll have a party chat tomorrow night around 10.30, 10.30 at night. Uh, we'll talk about it, and um, yeah, I hope, uh, I hope to see you guys there. Of course, you have to have Google Stadia in order for you to, uh, to join me <laughs> on, uh, on the party chat. This will be just for, for Stadia fans. You know, it's going to be us who are Stadia fans talking about this, and um, you, know, you can join me tomorrow, tomorrow night. For Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Don't forget, you can get Ghost Recon Breakpoint for $30 tomorrow. And uh, you can also get uh, Borderlands 3 for $38. So that's all there. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you all very much. See you guys. Uh, I'll see you soon. And uh, don't forget, tomorrow night, you can catch me on a party chat. And remember, this is my uh, namer tag, Stadia Upscaler 1936. Just go ahead and uh, hit me up, add me as a friend. I uh, already have some more people adding me as a friend, so there we go. Uh, let me move this away so I can see who it is. I'll put this over here. Uh, perfect. Eddie, all right, Eddie, going to be added in there as well. Perfect. So keep sending those invites. It's Stadia Upscaler 1936. There it is right there. Add me on there, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow night on the party chat. Remember, you got to have Google Stadia to join me. You know, that's, that's like the only way. All right, it's not going to be on YouTube. I'm going to take a little break from YouTube tomorrow and, and Thursday. I'll be back on Friday with a, with a YouTube live stream. Uh, but tomorrow night, we'll just strictly do a party chat on, on this. We'll talk about Stadia and the future of Stadia and stuff like that. All right, guys. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you uh, tomorrow night for those of you who are part of the uh, Google Stadia friends list. Thank you, guys. See you in a party chat tomorrow night, 1030. Have a good one. Take care. Stay positive.